So we're going to get into our first set of showcases um, in in just a moment. Um, and I just want to to give a, a little bit of background um, and then we'll go into our user experience showcase. So um, very quickly, I want to talk a little bit about what squads are and what teams are. Um, for those of you who might not be so familiar with, with this um, new lingo that we have in the community. So squads are simply small groups of individuals um, from organizations, from um, the world out at large, who are really interested on working on a specific discrete solution to a, a shared problem or priority. So we actually have a, a quite a large number of squads, micro front ends, COVID-19, OpenMRS Academy, analytics engine, oh, dictionary manager squad, formerly known as OCL for OpenMRS, uh, the fire squad, and we have a website redesign squad. So um, anybody is welcome to join these community squads. Um, like, we, like I said earlier, we're, we're better when we have multiple people coming together with different talents. Um, so, so if you're interested in any of these squads, you can join them. We'll share information about how, how, a, how to join a specific squad as we go along through the different showcases. Um, and teams. So teams are also small groups of individuals from the world at large, from organizations, um, but they're working on specific ongoing activities and solutions that support squads and our, our community at large. So a great example of this that Grace has already mentioned is our QA support team. Um, it doesn't matter what squad you're working on, we're hoping that you are thinking about QA from the beginning and our QA support team is there to help you think about how to go about doing that. And groups like the global events team, you know, we make these meetings happen and get the word out. Anybody is welcome to join um, our squads or our teams. So you'll also hear from them. Um, and then, like I said at the very beginning, we're trying to organize these showcases a little bit differently than in the past. So in addition to squads and teams, um, we, we hope that we'll also hear from implementers who are doing very important work on the ground. Um, and we wanna hear about your achievements, your innovations, your highlights um, during, during these showcase sessions. So um, whether you're a squad, a team, or even an implementer, you know, getting to know the community, trying to figure out where you can contribute, um, what team or squad you could contribute to. Um, we're here to, to help you make it happen. Um, so it's myself as director of community, Daniel Kiwa is our lead community developer, Grace is our director of product, Christine is our QA support team. Um, we're really here to help squads and teams um, and implementers get stuff done together easily. And if you want to know more about how squads and team work, teams work, um, join us tomorrow, Thursday, uh, July 15th, for our session on meaningful engagement and collaborative practices. We'll do a deep dive. So for our first um, set of showcases, actually for any showcases, we have a few key, key guidelines. Uh, please respect the time. We have about five minutes per squad or team or implementer. Um, we have discussions, um, breakout times for discussions at the end. Um, and help us, you know, we really hope that each squad or team or implementer will help us see the big picture, right? This is really where we're trying to connect the work you're doing with what countries are really, you know, interested in um, getting done, what their priorities are. So help us see what problem you're trying to solve and how people can start using it. And the more visuals, the better. Um, if you are in the audience, use your reactions. Um, tell, tell us what you like, clap, raise your hands, listen closely, um, ask questions or make comments in the chat. And of course, share your feedback. Like I said earlier, a lot of the work that you, know, you see during these showcases are works in progress. And you know, I think it's fantastic that people are so willing to share um, what they're thinking about, not even like fully finished. And, and that's actually fantastic because your feedback will help them um, go into their next round of, of innovation and make, their, make what they're working on even better. Um, comments, questions, and yeah, questions in the Zoom chat, please. We'll try to um, find, you know, we'll try to find space to get your, your questions answered um, and then publicly post, post um, whatever questions and the recording on talk. 
So let's get started with our first showcase around user experience. And um, I'm actually going to turn this back over to Grace to just kind of give a, a little bit of an intro to this, this showcase and then who is presenting. Thanks so much, Jen. Uh, yeah, if you'd like, I can actually, yeah, why don't you uh, keep sharing the screen and uh, I can tell you to, to proceed. Okay. Next slide. Well, uh, as Jen mentioned at, at the intro to today's conference, um, we are really aiming to improve data collection, access to high quality data, and support the use at the point of care, um, and support the use for quality data for multiple program areas. In terms of our direction, that means that user experience becomes really critical uh, in how we improve patient-centered care delivery while giving care providers a great, consistent, modern user experience. And so the key project that matches with this is um, our friendly modern UX uh, that we're working on in the Ref App 3.0. So we're going to walk through um, a couple things, uh, three different demos. We're going to receive a micro front ends uh, and, and Ref App 3.0 demo from our colleagues at Ampath. Uh, I'm going to share some of the UX uh, demos and things that have been happening uh, in, in the squad's design time. And then finally, we're going to welcome our friends from uh, the ORI UCSF team to share how they are applying the 3.0 model as they're working on this HIV reference implementation. Next slide, please. So starting with the micro front end squad, if you could imagine rapidly reusing front end modules that others created, trying out new tablet friendly modules right away without fearing that those will crash your system, these are the kinds of things we're trying to solve. Next slide, please. So a couple of key achievements this month that we're going to walk through. You're going to see the beautiful test results viewer that's been implemented, and we're going to show you the ongoing work for patient lists, offline mode, the SDK, and our dev guide documentation. Next slide, please. On this note, I'm going to hand it over to back to Erica Chilla from the Empath team to share with us the RefApp 3.0 demo. Okay, thank you, Grace. Uh, so I'll take you guys uh, through the 3.0 app, RefApp. Let me share my screen. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes, perfectly. Yeah, okay, thank you. So this is the initial page uh, that uh, you'll be taken to after loading the single spa module. That is the OpenMRS 3.0 app, ref app. And on the initial page, we have a slot there for entering your username. You'll notice that uh, this app is different from uh, other implementations where we used to have the username, the password, the password on the same page. So this one is a bit different. So the next uh, page you're taken to is entering your password. So the next page you're taken into is uh, selecting your location. By location, I mean uh, your role. Maybe if you're a registration desk clerk, you'll select the registration desk uh, clerk role. And whether you're working at the inpatient ward, you'll select the inpatient ward role. So this determines the kind of features that you'll see after logging in. So in our case, we shall log in as an inpatient ward. All right, so after we've uh, chosen our, our location or rather the role, uh, the role that uh, we would want to, the kind of patients that we'd want to see, we are taken to that next page where it will display the active visits. So assuming we are working in an inpatient ward and you're logging in for the first time during the day and uh, people had already logged into the system, uh, you'd imagine that we already have active visits that are existing. So this is the kind of page that you'd see after the landing page after uh, the login. So you can easily tap on one of the patients and it will take you to the patient dashboard. 
So we have other functions on top here on the navigation bar. The first one is a search patient icon. So the search patient icon would allow you to search for a patient either uh, by using their username or the uh, either by their username or uh, an, uh, an ID. The next icon you'll see here is an ad patient icon. The ad patient icon allows you to create a new patient. And if you notice when I click on that, it will take me to another page where I'm, uh, I'm able to enter uh, uh, details of a new patient uh, if I would want to create a new patient. So we have a couple of details here that I can be able to fill, like uh, the image option. I'm also able to uh, I'm also able to to put a patient photo. I think that's uh, not functional right now. I think my browser has a bit of a problem, but that one would allow you to add a patient photo in case a patient allows you to enter their photo into the system. So the next section here is the full name. That is the registration form for a new client. So you need to fill all these details. Some of the details are required. So you'll see, like the given name is required and the family name is required as well. So these are fields that you cannot uh, move without filling them. The gender, the date of birth, and after you're done, you can hit the create patient button and a new is created into the system. So moving back to the initial, the other page that uh, we were in in the previous uh, view, the search patient uh, option will allow you to search for a patient. So. Let us just search a patient and see how, how, how it works. So assuming our patient is called Agnes Testerson. So even if you search with a few initials, it will bring up the name of the patient. And as well as if you'd search using the, the, the identifier, uh, the unique identifier, it will bring up the patient name as well. So if I click on them, it takes me to the summary page. The summary dashboard and uh, on the summary dashboard i'm able to view the various widgets that we have for the, uh, on the patient dashboard so if you scroll down you'd see a number of uh, widgets care programs this allows you to enroll a patient into a program that uh, they qualify for active medications in case a patient is still on active medications and uh, they have not been discontinued. This is a widget that will display the active medications that the patient is taking. Then uh, on this side here, we have a list of tests that the patient has had over time. So this patient has had a lot of tests over time, over a period of time. We have a list of tests that the patient has had. And then on the side here, we have the biometrics uh, widget that shows you the weight, height, and the BMI. When I move down, remember Grace had mentioned earlier that all these widgets are customizable and uh, you can uh, customize them according to your implementation so that your it can suit uh, your needs. So at the bottom here, we have the vitals widget, the forms widget that allows you to enter forms for the patient during that visit. Uh, the conditions widget, you can also add a condition here. And then the notes widget where you're able to see previous encounters that the patient has had over time. So the first option here, the summary, we were still on, on the summary page. So the second option here is the clinical views. So the clinical views uh, uh, widget allows you to customize the kind of views that you'd like to see on your patient dashboard. So we have an add view button here that when you click on, it gives you a list of views that are available for you to select from. Again, this is customizable according to your implementation, and uh, you can choose whichever widget, whichever view you'd like to add. And when you say save and close, you'll notice that my view has been added on the clinical views. So this uh, has a, a number of functions here that uh, say if I would like to start a visit for today, I can easily start that visit and I select the type of visit that I'd like to start. And I'm able to start that visit for that patient. The next uh, widget that we have on the patient dashboard is the vitals and biometrics widget. That allows me to record vitals. And if I click on add, 
our vitals and biometrics uh, form is opened and I'm able to enter all these uh, big uh, 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 values and uh, save. So for purposes of time, I would not be able to do that. So let's just cancel that. And then uh, the orders, we have also orders. Orders allows us to, currently the implementation that we've done is only for medication orders. And this allows you to uh, uh, order medications for a patient using an order basket that uh, you see here. So this is how the order basket works. When you open the order basket, uh, it will uh, initially it will tell you that your order basket is empty. And uh, you should, uh, the next move that you should do is to search for a medication that the patient is taking before uh, you put them into your order basket. So assuming I'm on aspirin, you can select that and it will, uh, it will open for you an order form with all those uh, parameters that you're supposed to fill. You're supposed to enter the dose, the, uh, the frequency, the route, uh, instructions if there are any and then the prescription duration. And after you fill all those, you save. So after you've saved that, uh, all, uh, this order form, it goes into your order basket. And after you've uh, signed and saved your order basket, that's when the medications are dispensed to the patient. So that's a snip, uh, a preview of uh, how the order basket works. The next um, widget uh, that's really interesting is the test results widget. So the test results will display uh, the results that patients are, the patient has had over time. And uh, the initial load here, as you can see, it shows the most recent result that uh, the patient has. And uh, against each result, we have a trend and a timeline view. So maybe we can uh, look for one of the tests that uh, Agnes has had over time and uh, it has a number of results. So let's look at the viral load. So if you notice here on the trend view, we have a couple of results that uh, Agnes has had over time. So this is displayed first graphical view. And then at the bottom here, we have a tabular view that shows uh, the results with the most recent results on top. So if you hover over any of those, it will show you the results and the date that the result was uh, recorded into the system. So you can also have uh, there are options here on top here that uh, if you'd only like to see results for the recent day, there's an option for selecting a day. So there's also an option for uh, selecting maybe five days. So these are typically options for selecting the duration of uh, a time of the results that you'd like to see. If you'd like to see all the results, there's an all, all option. But if you'd like to see uh, maybe six months uh, results for uh, Agnes Testerson, just click on six months and it will display results over the last six months. So that is the trend view. We have a timeline view. A timeline view shows you all the results uh, with the most recent uh, on, the first, uh, on the first row. So if you scroll through these results, you're able to move backwards uh, and view results that uh, Agnes has had over a period of time. If you'd like to see uh, Agnes's results in 2015, maybe uh, ten, uh, in November, you notice that uh, you're able to scroll through and view all these results just by scrolling through. And uh, you can go as far as you want up to the initial time that uh, Agnes had their vi uh, first viral load uh, test done. The next um, widget that we have is encounters. This typically shows you uh, whatever I've shown you in the summary, the encounters that the patient has had over a period of time up to the most recent. The most recent encounter is on top. And then allergies, there hasn't been much done there. Conditions. Uh, gives you the ability to add a condition for a patient. So if you want to add a condition for Agnes Testerson, let's say Agnes has, uh, let's say malaria. So you're able to select that and uh, select also the onset date. If it is not today, if it's a previous date and it's active, you save and close. 
and it will give you a success message, message that the condition has been saved successfully. So that condition should uh, populate here, still something that uh, has to be fixed so that it can be seen real time. But if I navigate away and come back to that uh, widget, you will see that uh, our condition has been added that I've just recorded today. Immunizations, uh, we still don't have uh, much that. Attachments is still a widget that is still uh, under construction. And programs allows you to enroll a patient into programs that they're supposed to. Like in our instance at Ampath, we're supposed to enroll all our HIV patients into an HIV program. So this one will allow you to do that by, add, by hitting the add button and you're able to choose a program from this list and uh, select the date of, date of enrollment in case the program ends to date of completion and then you hit the enroll button. Appointment is still work in progress and form entry. Uh, it's, this is a section where a widget that allows you to enter forms for that patient is still uh, under construction and I think uh, in the near future this is one of the priorities that we need to work on. So that is it that I had to show for uh, the ref up for 3.0. Uh, over and back to you, Chris. And in case anybody has a question, they could uh, push in the chat. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Pardon me. Thanks so much, Eric. That's just a really great walkthrough, really clear. There's a couple other features that Eric didn't show us today um, that are under development and aren't yet ready in the production demo environment that we just wanted you to know about. And this is kind of our UX showcase for the quarter. Um, patient lists is one of them. So you'll be able to go in and see a number of patient lists, uh, things like lists that you have starred or favorited, um, system lists, like for example, um, automated generated lists, uh, and my lists. You can create your own list uh, and assemble um, lists of patients you're interested in. One um, area that's of particular interest uh, is loss to follow-up patients. So that is one of the first use cases for patient lists where you can create a list of patients that haven't been seen for 30 days since their missed appointment, for example. This ties in really tightly to the other major feature that we've been working on in the squad, offline mode. Um, now I'm not talking about being able to use the EMR if the clinic has spotty connectivity, that's a different problem than the one we've been working on. Uh, the problem we've been working on is if you have like someone doing HIV testing, counseling, or uh, a community worker who needs to follow up with someone, um, if, like a loss to follow up patient in the community, the idea is to enable them to take a tablet with them uh, and be able to find those patients and follow up with them offline. So you can see uh, Agnes Testerson here has had a number of offline actions done for her, but on my home page, I can see I've got a number of offline patients, and this is generated by a patient list. Um, and I can upload these patients when I'm back and my activities when I'm back in connectivity and see a success notification. So these are the designs uh, still in progress, more to come in the next showcase. Um, other quick notes before I hand it over to Utsin and the ORI team. Um, we've been working really hard on our dev guide. So if you're a developer and you're curious to learn more detail about working with uh, 3.0, then um, I'll post the link to this guide in the chat and uh, you'll see the comprehensive documentation there. And finally, um, on, on a kind of exciting note, the micro front end application is now integrated into the common dev workflows in OpenMRS through our SDK. So um, in our OpenMRS SDK, there's now uh, micro front end related commands for setup, deploy, and uh, building your distro. So huge thanks to Brandon from PIH for, for that work as well. Um, and all the, all the support from the different organizations in the squad that made this showcase possible today. So on that note, I'd like to, oh, I'll, uh, I think it, our next focus is bug bashing, patient list offline mode. Um, and as I mentioned in the 3.0 uh, plenary session, our main focus as a squad is getting end-to-end -end field testing uh, for outpatient care over the next two months, and then launching with a real clinic um, around uh, September, October, and the technical specifications that we need. So on that note, over to you, Utsin. Uh, tell us how things are going with Ori and using the 3.0 platform. Uh, I guess I should call it the framework. <laughs> Over to you. Great, Grace, thank you. My screen. 
Yeah, so I won't take much time as we don't have. Um, so uh, for those who don't know Ori and want to know more about Ori, I'll, I'll share a link on how to um, get to this page and you can see uh, what is Ori, why the envisioning, uh, the requirements and technical approaches that we, that, um, that we, are, we are following. But as Grace mentioned, we, we, we are leveraging too much from, from the um, uh, 3.0 um, uh, platform framework. Uh, so basically, everything that Eric was showing is uh, something that um, uh, Ori will I think it's in, I don't know if others just lost Itzen's audio. One of them is uh, HTS, uh, current treatment, so we are really, hello? Oh, we can hear you hello? again, sorry. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Grace. Yes, uh, we can hear you now. Okay. Sorry to cut you off. It's, uh, go ahead. Well, you lost me. Yeah, I think my internet was a little bit. Uh, where did you lose me? Sorry. I'm not sure that we missed. I think it caught up. Right. Maybe uh, okay. maybe re say the, the previous maybe, sentence. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just give a quick. So I was saying that this is our um, like page uh, where you can find more information. I will share the link on how to get to this page for those that uh, don't have access. Um, uh, you can find here um, like all the materials uh, about Ori if you want to get to know more about Ori. And I was saying that we actually are building on top of the OpenMRS 3.0 uh, framework. Um, so all Have our own specific use cases and where we have um, overlaps with uh, what is needed for the ref app, we are always in, in contact with um, uh, with the OpenMRS uh, community. Uh, so to make sure that there is no duplication of effort when we're creating um, uh, new function. Sorry, it's in, I think we lost your audio about 20 seconds ago. I wonder, um, it's in, if you'd like, uh, maybe if you'd like to stop sharing your screen, I can, I can bring this up and maybe that will save your bandwidth. Hello, sorry, I dropped. My internet is not good today. Hope you can hear me and see my screen. Yes, both are good. Right. So I was saying we the same. We are following the same uh, design approach, its principles in terms of, of UX. So basically, the uh, also the, the the development process is the same. So we start from from UX uh, from some UX design that we we have. Uh, Two X designs on on, on on the team, uh, both at OpenMRS community and, and one dedicated also uh, for Ori. But basically, they are aligned, and we tried as much as possible to come up with common designs that fits uh, both uh, use cases. Um, so, just to give an example, this is a um, uh, um, uh, design that was made for for our um, HTS form, and if you can see here. Um, we, we have a form that was, uh, let me okay, hope my session, second, let me just go again here. Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we, we first started from, from design, so how, how did the, the form should look like, like, uh, and then the, we implemented the same way, so we have like here, uh, all these uh, the pages on this side, so this side menu, so you can navigate to to the different pages um, of of this form. So all of that it's it comes from 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 the designs, and as you can see, 
this is um, the same uh, application that uh, Eric was showing. But this is an ORI instance I'm, I'm, I'm running, but uh, it uses the same um, framework as, as, three, as, three point, as 3.0. So right now this shows the retrospective, HTS retrospective form. We are working on, on, on building also the uh, POC version of the same uh, form and also working uh, on, on building the requirements for, for current treatment. And in our current um, uh, sprint, uh, we are focused on, on, on also working on, on, on patient lists. As you can see here, we also use the same, was the same designs um, uh, that uh, Grace um, was sharing. Yeah, so I think, and in 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 my opinion, it's it's actually a good um, uh, it's a good partnership that we, we did with OpenMRS, and I think the work is going is going fine. And you can see also another screen here where we we have like an, an home page. And if you see, if you remember from Grace's um, screen, you saw the same kind of tile. So everything is try that we're trying to, to build is aligned uh, with uh, OpenMRS 3.0. Of, <clears throat> of course, uh, um, ORI will be like a, a, a package, but it will leverage uh, too much from, from what uh, the community is building. And we also be uh, um, working uh, to give uh, back to, to the community. So basically, New stuff that we build and 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 it's not part of, of, of the roadmap and the community that thinks it needs to be on the ref app will also be um, migrated to um, to the the, the community uh, code base. So that's uh, basically uh, the approach uh, that we that we are taking. So yeah, I think in a nutshell that's what we are we are currently doing. Uh, if you have questions, um, the time comes, feel free. I'm here to, to share um, that link. Thanks, Grace. Bravo. Thanks so much, Utsun. Well done. Glad that the internet held out for you there in the end. Well, <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> that concludes our, uh, our showcases for our UX theme today. Thanks so much uh, to everyone. This is really exciting momentum for our community and we're really grateful for all of the support and contributions that have made this possible. It's really all thanks to everyone who's been um, sharing joint efforts. So thank you everyone. Back to you, Jen.